Hello, and thanks for tuning in to another. My name is Miss Battle. It is story time. Class is in session. We're just going to start off by giving God his glory. Father God, I just thank you for another day. And I just ask that you open up our minds, our hearts, and our ears to hear what the Spirit is saying. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. Amen, amen, amen. We're not going to prolong this. We're not going to prolong this. But I'm not going to read every story. But like I said, I am going, I am the storyteller. So, yes, thanks for tuning in to another Miss Battle story reading. <laughs> so, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to jump right in. And I'm in the book of Genesis. And we're going to jump over... Because um, we read, we read the fall of man. So what we're going to jump over is, we're going to jump over uh, the, we're going to jump over Cain and Abel. You know the story. I don't have to read the story. Cain killed Abel. Yeah, yeah. But after, after Cain killed Abel, which was the good son, because it's always, God always got to have a pure line. So that where, that's where Seth come in. So years later, they had a child named Seth that took the place of Abel. So now, read your own Bible. Hey, I am here to encourage you. My goal, and my goal has always been for you to read the word yourself, I am here to encourage you to just maybe you might open up your Bible. I got me a brand new Bible. Oh, yeah, that's why we starting over. <laughs> so, but I'm encouraging you to read your own Bible. Read your Bible. Get some kind of understanding. Even if you don't get none, get a little understanding. Then you'll be able to ask questions. So... Questions are always good. I don't know who told you asking questions wasn't good. The wise man asks questions, okay? So he won't leave no misunderstandings. Let's jump right into the story. We're going to read the story of the flood. I'm going to read, I'm going to start at chapter 6, Genesis chapter 6. I'm not going to read, but I'm only going to read one chapter. So this particular chapter is uh, 22 verses. So, I'm just going to get ready, get set, and let the Lord do his thing. And it reads as, Genesis chapter 6, verse 1, And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, the daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw that the daughters of men, that they were fair, which meaning looked good. Nice looking, lovely. <laughs> and they took them wives of all which they chose, as many as they wanted to. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he is that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be numbered a hundred and twenty years. And there were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bore children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every in imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continuously. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping things and the fowls of the air. For it repented me that I have made them. Repented the Lord. It, he, he, he felt sorrowful. That's what repent. That's the reason why he told us when we repent. I was not supposed to interrupt the story. Come back. <laughs> uh, 
verse 8. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And these are the generations of Noah. Noah was the just man and perfect in his generation. And Noah walked with God. And Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And the earth also was corrupt before God. And the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth and make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shall be, room shall thou make in the ark. And shall pitch it within and without with pitch. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make of it. The length of the ark. Okay, I'm going to jump down because now he's describing the ark. Because God is very particular when, he's, when, when he wants something. 18. 17. And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh wherein is the breath of life from under heaven and everything that is in the earth shall die but with thee I will establish my covenant and thou shalt come into the ark thou and thy sons and thy wife and thy wife and thy sons wives with thee and of every living thing of all flesh two of every sort shall thou bring into the ark to keep them alive with thee. They shall be male and female, of fowls after their kind and of the cattle after their kind, the creeping things of the earth after its kind. Two of every sort shall come unto thee to keep them alive and take thou unto thee of all food that is eaten, and thou shalt gather it to thee, and it shall be for food for thee and for them. And thus did Noah, according to all that God commanded him, so did he. Amen, amen. That is the story. That's the story of the flood. Okay. Okay, now. Class. Let's just go back. Let's rewind because so many things came to my mind just reading that. And so I guess the first thing I'm going to say is what the Lord is saying, my spirit shall not always strive with man for he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be 120 years. God is letting you know right now, ain't nobody living past 120 years, okay? Because the Bible says later on, you read it for yourself, if you, 70 years is, 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 is anything after seven is your blessed years. He's saying, after 70, there's such a blessing to behold, okay? Uh, and we can see as in life. You got in seventy. You got your great grandkids. You you don't you don't got wisdom. You don't got knowledge. Hopefully, <laughs> so now you get to live the prosperous, blessed life. Okay, but no one's living more than one hundred and twenty years because that's what the Lord said. Okay, but He also said, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination, th every imagination of his thoughts. Of his heart, the thought of his heart was evil continuously. This is what I wanted to recap or, or say. Because in Revelation and in 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 uh, in the epistles back in the, the gospel, when they asked, when shall the last days, when shall the end come, you know? And so the thing is. The corruption, because he said, the time will come, the days will be like the days of Noah. Read it for yourself. Find it for yourself. 
You know, he said, in the end, before he come, it's going to be just like in the days of Noah. People are going to be buying and selling as they go and marrying and getting married. Just living life. Just like it was in the days of Noah. But the key component here is, what was they doing in the days of Noah? Okay? What they was, the world was so corrupt. Nobody, everybody was thinking about self. And the lewdness of what was going on. Oh, man, the corruption. Because we know Lot lived in the days of Noah. And we know the homosexual because they was beating on his door. Talking about we want the man. We want this man to come out so we can do to him like they do to women. And that ain't the only time. They did it with, with, uh, with the prophet and his wife. They, you know, the prophet went into shelter in a man's home. And we'll get to that story because I like that's the saddest story. But anyway... They wanted the man. They didn't want the woman, but he pushed the woman out anyway, and they raped her all night, and she died till she died. And that's that story. We'll get to that story. But the point I'm trying to get to is that in the days of Noah, the corruption, the unruly, everybody was doing their own thing, and that is the reason why it was so much corruption. Do I need to read it again? That God saw that it was the whole world was just corrupt. Is not the whole world corrupt now? If you can't see this corruption in all the world, something is wrong with you and your wives. You got wrong people trying to make it look right. <laughs> you got Laws being changed. What the Bible said was going to happen in the end days. They're going to try to change laws to fit that time, this time, if, uh, this time uh, that we're living, this millennial time. Laws will be changed, and they are not changed, or they not changed. If they can make, if, if two same sex can get married by law, the laws, they change in laws. So everything is, is coming to pass. So the awareness, that is what we can get. So the moral of this story is the awareness around us because God said before he come, when he comes, it's going to, because it's so corrupt, he did the flood and then he saw favor in Noah. So let's talk about that. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. That's verse eight. Let's talk about this grace. So it won't be misunderstood. Grace. Grace is God's character. It's a part of God's character. Okay? And, and we, that is what we're going to talk about in the next video. Because I told you we're going to double portion. One is the story. And then one is God's character. So let's talk about grace. Because grace is a part of God's character. And... He found grace. Noah was the only one in his family. See, whoever's up under your roof, when you save, he said, I'll save the whole family. Okay, that's what the words say. Get in your word. So we just got to stay in the word so we can stay strong to be able to stand strong in, in these last days, in these evil days. Okay? <laughs> but he found grace. Noah found grace in God's eyes. So I'm saying that to say this, because everybody else in the world died. Everybody. So nowadays, let's bring grace to nowadays. Nowadays, because people say we saved by grace, we saved by grace. Yes, we are saved by grace. The whole world is saved by grace because it's something that we, we deserve to die. That's what it is. We deserve to die. But God giving us grace to live, to repent. That's the purpose. You ain't, he don't want you to keep living, to keep living the same way you living. Okay. <laughs> grace mean he ain't kill you because God is holy. And he gonna always be holy. Holiness is his, is, is his character. Holiness is attribute. Holiness. Okay. It's an action. We got to, 
It's an action we got to be ye holy, God said, because I am holy. Now, I know y'all say, how can we be holy? All you have to do is get in your word of God. And that's where I'm going to go back to uh, being in the word of God. Being in the word of God will help you build your spirit man up so that you will not conform into this world. You can live in a corrupt world, but you don't have to be corrupt. Okay, we have grace right now because we're living and we deserve to die because we are not righteous in God's eyes. No man is right. No man is right. So every man deserves to die as soon as they sin. And, you know, if everybody died as soon as they committed a sin, don't you know? Well, let's just say how would we be when <laughs> human race would be distinct because we're going to you start sinning early in life because the sin is our nature. We have a human nature. We have a sinful nature. And that's what sin is. We are born into sin, but we are rebirth, born again in the spirit. Oh, you better grab this. You better grab this because like the, the New Testament said, Nicodemus said, how can a man be born again? Should I go back into my mother's womb? No, no, no. All you have to do is mean it in your heart. God, Only God knows the heart. So you can fake. You can fake with people. You can fake out in the public. You can even fake with your family, saying you save, and I ask God to come into my life, and I'm saved. But you don't really mean it. You're doing it because you, for sure, you're doing it because you, you know, other reasons, that's what's being, you're just being fake about it. So if you want to be fake about it, then you're not really saved. You're not. You're not. You got to come real. You got to be real. And so salvation, he saves your spirit. When we come to God and say, because we need salvation, because we're not, I'm, I'm saying that, because the moral of the story is, the corruption in the world, corruption all around the world, in the world, all around the world, everywhere you turn. And it ain't getting no better. It's only going to get worse. So, and if you know these things, then you need to be trying to run to the throne of God. To the, you know, thank you, Lord, for your grace and mercy, because they run together. Grace and mercy goes together. Grace is grace and mercy is one you you getting, but you don't deserve. And the other one, <laughs> you don't deserve it. You don't deserve heaven, but it's given to you if you receive it. Okay, that's what it is. You don't deserve it. You deserve hell. <laughs> I'm changing the subject, but that's what it is. Because you got to understand what grace and mercy is about. Because God have grace because he loved mankind. He loved his creation. That's what he loved. So when you say God loved the world, so loved the world, yes, he do. He loved the whole world and every everything he created. He loved. What he don't love is the actions. Because God is an action God. Love is an action. So when you love, you you show love. And you show love by being by being giving, kind, showing mercy, these things. So, okay, story. So Noah found grace in God's eyes. And so I say that to say that the whole world deserves hell. But God's grace and mercy have us living to this very day. And you should say thank you, Lord, for waking waking you up this morning. You should say thank you, Lord, because the psalmist David, which is the King David, the man that's after God's own heart, he said, grace and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life that I may dwell in the house of the Lord. So if you know, if you receive God as your Savior, Jesus Christ as your Savior, you got to receive him because here the thing is, because God gave it, he died for everybody. 
to receive him. That's what it's about. He died for everybody to be able to receive him. But everybody is not going to receive him. But the purpose of his death and resurrection is for people to receive him. He don't force himself on nobody. Uh-uh, that ain't a God. That ain't God that force. Mm -mm. God don't force. God don't force. He's gentle, loving, humble servant is Jesus Christ. And I want to talk about, let's talk about, since the story, I, I, a short story, but let's talk about one of the things that, that, uh, that, that's, I was going to go into the story, but I better wait. I better wait. So the bottom line is before the end comes, it's going to be just like in the days of Noah. And that's the moral of the story because we're living in those days, just like in the days of Noah, where back, back biting, stabbing in the back, cursing you out and gossiping and pulling people down just so they can get ahead. Ooh, how do people will pull other people down? We'll talk about other people. But don't you know when you talk about other people, people is looking at you all crazy? Because they just ain't saying it. They ain't saying it. But they looking at you crazy. Trust me, they are. Because <laughs> that's how I be looking at them like, and you're just talking about people. I'm thinking to myself, how small are we? <laughs> but thanks for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in to another Bible story reading by we, Miss Battle. <laughs> and behold, I, even I, do bring the floods of water upon the earth. But only this time, it won't be water, y'all. It's going to be fire. And so, get yourself together morally, okay? Because God works, when you get saved, when you got saved, when you came to Christ, he changed your spirit, man. You still have your fleshly human man, but the spirit man indwells in you. But now who's working in you? Because the spirit man has not grown, has not manifested because you are a new convert. You just accepted God and asked him to come into your life. You told him you were sorry for all the things that you've done and you know that he died for you. So now your spirit man, once you say, Lord, come into my life, he has come into your life and he... You are saved. Your spirit man is saved. Oh, yes, your spirit man is saved. But he's constantly fighting with your fleshly man. So that's the battle that we have to conquer. Fighting our fleshly man. So, again, thanks for tuning in to another My Name is Miss Battle Bible Story Reading Time. And you have a blessed day. Thank you.